Okay, so this is lesson 3-1, which is relations and functions. Our essential question is, what is a function? What, why is domain and range important in defining a function? Okay, so the first example asks us, what are the domain and the range of the function? So what I want to point out, I'm going to use some color here, is the domain, okay, is all of our x values. It's also what we call our inputs. So all of these numbers right here are the domain. Let's make this a little bit easier. Okay. Then change the color here. Our range is talking about all of our y values, which are the output. Okay, so when we're saying this, the domain, so when we're listing off the domain, we would say the domain of this function is going to be, and you use the curly brackets because it's a set, it's a set of numbers. So you use the curly brackets and then you list the numbers in the domain. So the domain would have one, two, three, four, and five. That is our domain for that function. Then our range is 11, 12, 13. So here's an important piece. If you have a number like 13 that's listed multiple times, you only write it once. So that right there is my domain and my range. Okay, example two is talking about coming up with a reasonable domain and range. So this is talking about real life situations and coming up with a domain and range that makes sense. So our first situation is a hose fills a 10,000 gallon swimming pool at a rate of 10 gallons per minute. Okay, so when we think of the domain here, we have to, first of all, we have to decide there's two things that are happening. We have gallons, and we have minutes. So one of those is going to be our x value and one is going to be our y value. So you think which one depends on the other? Well, the number of gallons in the swimming pool depends on how many minutes you've been filling it with water. So minutes is our x or our domain and gallons is our y or our range. So in this case, we're, when we're talking about minutes, we know we can't have negative minutes, so we would say zero is our minimum value to we need to figure out how many minutes it would take to fill up the pool because it's not going to go on forever. We're going to stop filling up the pool when the pool is full. So if we take 10,000 gallons and we divide it by the 10 gallons per minute, that's going to tell us that it's 1,000 minutes to fill up the pool. So our domain would be zero to 1,000 minutes, okay? And then our range, we think about the minimum and maximum number of gallons, like we've labeled up there. So minimum gallons would be zero, and our maximum gallons would be the, the pool is full, so be 10,000. That would be gallons, okay? So that's the domain and range for that situation. Then our second situation is a restaurant needs to order chairs for its tables. One table can accommodate four chairs. Okay, so this, this um, we have to think of which is our X and which is our Y. So we have tables and chairs. So the number of chairs we need depends on how many tables we have. So our tables would be our X and our chairs would be dependent, so it would be Y. So if we start with our X's, that's our domain, tables, okay? So how many tables is it possible for us to have? So our domain would be zero tables to, we don't know. It depends on how big the space is. So we would say our domain is zero to um, the total tables needed. Okay, and then range, if we have zero tables, we need zero chairs. And then we have to think, okay, 
each table can accommodate four chairs. So if we're figuring out how many chairs we need, it would be four times the number of tables. So we could say four times the number of tables. So those are gonna be our domain and range. Okay, then the next part asks, is the domain, and domain for each situation continuous or discrete? So continuous means that you can have fractions and decimals and parts of the value where discrete means you have to jump from whole number to whole number or point value to point value. So a graph that's continuous looks like this, where a graph that is discrete looks like this. Okay, so if you think about the domain for the hose filling up, the domain is minutes. Can we have a fraction of a minute? Yeah, we can have 2.5 minutes. We can even have a fraction of a second. So we can get a tiny, tiny like increment of minutes or seconds, or we can get smaller and smaller and smaller. So that means that our graph would look kind of like this one right here. It can be every value um, between your starting time of zero and your ending time of a thousand minutes. So that would mean that this situation up here is continuous. And then if we go over to the restaurant, can we have a fraction of a table? No, not really. I mean, we could cut a table in half, but it's not going to be a functional table if it's cut in half. So that means that we can only have one table or two tables or five tables or 10 tables. We can't have 3.75 tables. So this would be an example of discrete where it jumps from one point to the next. Okay. And our last example is determining if something is a function. So we can tell this is an example of a set of points. Then we have a mapping. And then we'll also talk about um, from a graph, how can you tell if something is a function? So, um, and then if it is a function, is it one-to-one -one or not one-to-one? -one? Okay. So I'm going to get, I'm going to talk about these examples, but then I'm also going to give some other examples here. So if we look at part A, I'm going to use a different color here. In order, when I have a set of points or a table, the thing that I'm looking at is I'm going to go through and look at the Y's. So you'll notice we have one, five, seven, and eight. So automatically I can say, yes, it's a function because you have all different X's. Okay, so then an example, let me put over here, an example of where you would not have a function is if you had points like this. So notice I have a one and a one, so I have a repeated X value and they go to different Y values. So if I had a set of points that look like that, where I have an X value more than once written down and two different Y values for that, then we would say, no, it's not a function, okay? So then if we go back here, the second question is, is it one-to-one? -one? So one-to-one, -one, you determine by looking at the Ys. So if you look at all these Ys here, two, six, negative one, zero, they're all different. So we say, yes, it's one-to-one -one because we have all different Ys. Okay, now we go to B. So again, if you, for a mapping, what you're gonna look at is you're going to make sure that every input over here, so every X value has one single line coming out of it. And if you look here, that is true. So we would say, yes, it's a function. Okay, but then is it one-to-one? -one? Remember, one-to-one -one means that you don't have any repeated Ys. Well, if we look at this, if I were to put these as numbers, it'd be 117, then 217, then 311, and so on. So all of the Xs would be different, but notice how we repeat the Ys. So this would not be one-to-one. -one. So determining if something's a function, you're looking for Xs. You wanna make sure they're all different, and if they are, then yes, it's a function. To determine if it's one-to-one, -one, you're looking for the Ys to see if the Ys are all different. 
And if it is, then it's one-to-one. -one. If they're not, then it's not. Okay, let me know if you have any questions.